always felt a little incomplete. I wanted to do a smaller pond, but with giant rocks. And the giant rocks were to scale with the 60 inch bowl. I would love to have this at my house. Is this not the best ever? Hey guys, it's Brian from Team Aquascape, and our channel is all about transforming outdoor living spaces with water features. Design and installation is who we are, and building backyard dreams is what we do. I really want to do another feature back here. So hopefully we find time to get this done. So I want to pull these giant boulders out of here, put dig some stuff out and get little waterfalls dropping in between the joints here and then do the same thing on this side. I want to get giant massive boulders in here and have little trickly waterfalls dropping down and have a bridge over this whole space. So that was one plan. <laughs> and like so many plans I have, they evolve and change and change over time. And I think that's what keeps me so interested after all these years building water features. I took all the energy of that thought and did it on a much, much larger scale out front. And we're gonna show you that project, I think in the next couple weeks. I kept with some of the same ideas. I wanna get some big giant boulders in here, but I wanted to do a pond. And I wanted one more pond. I've always dreamt of doing a pond with just massive, massive boulders. Here's the new idea. So I'm painting out kind of the perimeter, the area I'm gonna dig. Now, I want this pond to be small and obviously the area I'm marking out is enormous. Marking out is such a big area because we're using giant, giant boulders. That big circle is gonna be for a new project we have. We have these 60 inch and 50 inch spillway bowls that I want to incorporate. So I've marked out the whole area, changed the pathway. That white line shows the pathway, that circle shows where the bowl is gonna be. And these are the massive boulders that I get to play with to build this small pond. To move those giant boulders, I have to use a giant machine. So here I'm gonna start plucking out this old thing. We always start with demo, start pulling these little rocks out of here. Now I've got this big old machine. I had to pull the fence down because there's no way I was gonna get in there. Keep in mind that big rock. Just remember that big rock because what we do with this rock is gonna be incredible. That rock weighs approximately 5,000 pounds. Uh, it's about seven feet long and about four feet wide. So here we are digging, digging, digging. It came into all kinds of garbage. There was uh, an old water feature, obviously down in here at some point, uh, still holding water. It probably just got buried at some, some time in our aquascape life there. We're hauling all the dirt away. There's no place for that soil inside this water feature. So everything's gotta come out, dumped, and then moved with the skid steer. We generated, I believe, about 12 truckloads of soil coming out of there, which is equivalent to about 60 yards of soil. Here we are digging, 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 just getting that bottom depth in there, kind of placing the bowl. That's that 60 inch bowl coming over some of the designs. So that blue line kind of marks out how far that bowl is going to hang out. That line there is going to be for a stacked unilock wall that's going to go in there. And that inside that other blue line is really the deep part of the pond. So I want this pond to also be about four feet deep. I'm thinking of it as just kind of like a deep plunge pool. So here I am digging out for the foundation for that unilock wall. After we get everything excavated, just like any other pond, we come in, throw a bunch of fabric down, don't ask me about Jack's blue face. That's a story for another time. <laughs> get the fabric down, get the liner down, and then we're gonna start setting some boulders. Now, here is that big giant rock. And here's what I think is so cool. We're taking that seven foot by three foot to that 6,000 pound, 5,000 pound boulder and completely burying it. I wanna put it down in the bottom of the pod because the pond is gonna be crystal clear and I want the rock work through the water to look as impressive as the rock work above the water. So we set that in, it's gonna end up being a little bit of a stair. We set another boulder on top of it. You're strapping one rock at a time. The hardest part about this project is that the whole thing is gonna be built out of like 11 giant boulders. And when you have such few boulders, every rock has to fit perfectly to the next one. A lot of times I'll say uh, building a pond, building a waterfall is like building a jigsaw puzzle without knowing what the final picture is supposed to look like. What's your outcome supposed to look like? So we get to make that up, which is great, but everything should still fit together really nice. Continue to backfill everything with gravel. Gravel just makes things so solid. So we use these super sacks because it allows us to sling these big sacks of gravel up, open up the bottoms, just kind of slice them and then pour that gravel right where we want it saves an enormous amount of time uh, on labor and just uh, it makes it so much more efficient if we had to shovel all that gravel in back there we'd be using about 200 five gallon buckets all 
All right. So here's this rock. This rock will be uh, a pain in my butt for a long time. And here's why, like we needed something like five foot, six foot tall. This rock did that when you stood it up like that. But the shape of the rock is just kind of unusual. It's got that big like floating head on top of it. And when we set it in place, I was like, ah, it looks all right. I don't know. Everybody else really liked it. They thought it was cool. It definitely has the right shape for a bowl to sit around it. But when we set it, I should have just trusted my instincts and dropped it a little bit lower. It stands about 18 inches too tall. And so we got this thing into place. We spent a long time getting it to this point. And um, I think it was just like, you know what, let's go. I think we can fix it with landscape and everything else. Maybe we get some other rocks around it. It'll help scale it down. Well, that never really happened. <laughs> and uh, so now it just kind of lives there. And then the rock did something very, very unusual. And I always say, listen to the boulders. The rocks will tell you where they want to go. This rock actually decided for no reason at all, just to fall over. It was a little scary, right? But <laughs> when the rock says, I don't want to live here anymore, and it just falls over. Luckily, we had all that gravel underneath, so there was no harm to the liner. Uh, we had, you know, a good 18 inches to two feet of gravel back behind it there. The guys went ahead, slung it back up. I wasn't there for this. They slung it back up. They fixed it, dropped it back in place the exact same way it was before. Got it all solid. And now the rock lives there forever. I guarantee you at some point in my aquascape life, that rock is coming out of this pot. You guys tell me, what do you think of this big rock? All right. So enough about that. We move on to the rest of this project. Now take a look at this rock. This is a super special rock. If you look at it really close, you're going to see that natural depression. It's almost like mother nature decided to carve out a little bowl in there and we had to take advantage of it so we're gonna set this thing into place it's gonna take a long time to carve it into place at the right height but i think it'll be worth it we're ultimately gonna have a patio bowl spill into that rock and then that rock will overflow and fall into the pond this is how long it's taking us nothing was fitting just right so we're manipulating head rock big tall six foot rock to get this thing to fit in there just right it did fit perfectly though so now that that's set we can come in uh, we're carving in this other bowl. Colby is doing his magic here with the brick saw, getting that 60 inch spillway bowl to sit in just perfect next to this boulder. We usually just put little marks on the rock, kind of gives us an idea where high points are, where low points are, and we can carve that thing in their place perfectly. Trevor's gonna start working on base material for the, the big wall down at the bottom here. We put down some base material that helps him level everything off, and then he can start stacking this engineered wall block right up the face of this. This will allow us to ultimately cantilever a blue stone patio right over the top of this thing. We do these wall stones quite a bit though. It just allows us to stack rock up a big vertical wall super fast. Colby's doing some final touches, getting that big bowl to sit in there. This is gonna be one of my favorite parts of this project. The video of this just does not do it justice. If you were to take your arms and spread them as far as you can apart from one fingertip to the other, that's about how wide that bowl is. That's a seven foot level and it just barely got from side to side on that. So it is a huge bowl. The first time I saw the bowl, I was like, oh my gosh, this is bigger than my bathtub. Um, they're called patio ponds. Uh, we're just manipulating those big bowls. They have spillways come out of them. We plumb them all up and, and get water to come right out of the little joints. It is so big. It's literally a pond all by itself. We just put an upper pond onto this plunge pond. All right, this is a great little trick right here. Colby's putting fabric back in this little notch. In here, we add a bunch of soil. It allows us to put a plant pocket on top of the line. You can get plants up close to some of the boulders. Over time, it just looks better and better. So we do these little plant pockets quite often. One of the trickiest parts of this pond was gonna be the skimmer box. We didn't, we weren't sure exactly how we were gonna do the plumbing, if we should do an intake bay, uh, infinity edge, if we should do a skimmer box, what skimmer box we should use. I don't have a whole lot of water pumping through this. We went with our signature 1000 skimmer. We're running everything with inch and a half and two inch lines. So we've got a separate pump. We're using an ultra 1000 just to feed one of the bowls. And then we've got a, uh, we have a four to 7,000 gallon power pump feeding jets and two other bowls, which is gonna be more than enough. We're looking for about a thousand gallons, maybe even a little less coming out of that little notch. That's all you need. So if I've got two bowls um, with one pump, there's 2,000 gallons. That leaves me another 4,000 gallon or 5,000 gallons left over for jets. And we have about four jets. One of the things I really didn't want to do is see the skimmer box. So if you notice in front of that, some big giant boulders, 
Those are really gonna help disguise everything. Of course, I gotta put ball valves on everything. There's Colby doing some more fine tuning stuff. Just want that water to spill just right coming out of that little notch or the that little depression in that rock mother nature gave us all right now we're going to come in here scrape a bunch of this stuff off get ready for our base material so we can start putting our patio and stuff together so this is great you can kind of see what we're doing with the liner we're just going to take that liner roll it up over the back side of that engineered wall stone and then our patio can go literally right on top of that the new york blue stone that's going to cantilever out over that wall will end up ultimately just holding that liner in place we're coming in through here throwing down a little base material we'll grade this all out compact it nice and uh, tight this is just a crushed granite it's a black crushed granite it works perfect for that kind of stuff all right here we are hooking up our pumps getting those things situated in our skimmer boxes there's our big guy it's going to go over there and then we've got a small little ultra pump that's going to go on that other connection notice here that little ring of gravel around the back side of the bowl we always do that uh, in case the bowl were to back up a little bit if water goes over the upper edge of the bowl that gravel will catch it there's a liner behind it and then put it ultimately back into the, the water feature for us here's trevor doing his thing he's so good at this stuff kind of decorating using the plants uh, we've got some of these sedum tiles we're just kind of fluffing in in between joints and stuff and now colby and billy are coming in setting this bluestone atlantis water gardens is just so good at this doing the the natural bluestone and making all the cuts and getting them just right so it's so nice to have uh colby hard you out here working with us on this because it's not that i can't do it i don't like doing it <laughs> so much dust just every piece has to be cut to fit just right there's colby just kind of cutting that radius off the backhand side leaving room for some plants to help soften up uh, the space between the walkway and the fence. You can see plants and mulch are starting to come in. Things are really, really coming together at this point. Wanted to take this last big boulder just as kind of an entrance rock. We have all these big giant boulders in the pond and uh, I thought we needed just something big, kind of monolithic standing up before you got into the pond area. Just helps tie everything together. We're gonna use this hemlock to kind of soften that boulder up. So the rock almost like peeks out amongst some of the plants. It was a really time consuming project. This took us, you know, normally upon this size would take us uh, a day to build it. This one has taken us four. We're gonna start rinsing down some of this dust. Uh, we're filling the pond up. This thing is just about to be ready to show you guys what it looks like. So the Aqua Gardens are something that we've been working on since really the birth of Aqualand over here and had some revisions and then total teardowns and remodifications. And so for the last two years after the swim pond was added and the new basalt columns and poundless waterfalls, it's always felt a little incomplete. And now I'm gonna show you why I feel so complete in here and in here with the aqua gardens, kind of. So when you walked into the aqua gardens, you always had the chance of going or the opportunity to go left or go right. And you really never went right because it's always looked incomplete over here. Now with the addition of this big giant boulder, some landscape lighting, more of a very defined pathway, it definitely pulls you this way. And that's what I've always wanted to try to create. Some of you guys have been following for a while and you know that my favorite designs are the ones that create just a little bit of mystery. So as you come through this arbor here, you start discovering more and more. And the very first thing you're gonna see is, is that giant 60 inch patio bowl. It's so awesome. In fact, it's so awesome, it's a pond by itself. Think about that, 60 inches. And so I wanted to really incorporate our new 60 inch bowl and the 50 inch bowl. And to make those look right, I also had to use large, large boulders. And that's where the idea came from. I really wanted to build another pond. We only got, we've got the big swim pond. We have another pond over there. I wanted to do a smaller pond, but with giant rocks. And the giant rocks were to scale with the 60 inch bowl. As you come in closer and closer, you get an idea of, some of the size of the boulders that we're using. This rock is sitting, it's actually a six foot boulder. We put a foot of it down into the ground, but it's just about at five feet here. We've got some other rocks that are pushing 4,000, 6,000 pounds a piece. I think when we can use these huge boulders in such a small space, it makes it look very, very natural. The idea is that these rocks were kind of born here and all of this other man-made stuff was worked in around it and I think we pulled it off pretty awesome. So I'm sitting on my least favorite rock in the entire place. I knew it when we put it in, that it was a little overwhelming for the spot. Ooh, it's not that bad, but I guess it's the reason why I still get excited to come to work every single day and, and build these things, because there's always room for improvement. 
This rock, for example, would have looked so much better if it was dropped down about 18 inches, almost two feet. A little bit more to scale with these falls in here. But it's nice, it's kind of like the jump rock. Over time, this rock will feel better and better, especially as the weeping Alaskan cedar branches kind of come out over it. As these uh, green giant arborvitaes get fuller and fuller, this rock will get scaled down more and more. We've even got some plants back behind here which will help scale that thing down. The other thing I wanted to do with this project is keep all the waterfalls really simple. So we've got the spillway bowl that's got that kind of horse, we call it a horse tail fall coming off of it. We have the other patio bowl over there that's got the filter added to it with that same horse tail fall. I wanted to do the same thing coming in over here. I didn't want to have big, giant, dramatic waterfalls because it's such a small pond. I really wanted to keep it uh, really tranquil back here. So just kind of the background sound of waterfalls. One of the rocks we got to use was this giant rock right here that my right foot is standing on. This rock is approximately five feet wide, about two feet wide that way, but naturally it had this little bowl cut into it. So right in here, there was this natural depression in the rock, and every time we saw it, we said we have to do something with it. So it was a lot of rock to put back in here just for this to fall into it, but it's one of my favorite parts of the entire project. I'm still playing around with this waterfall in here and at some point I'll have some extra time to get this to fall exactly the way I want. But for right now it looks really great and I love the sound of it. Other thing I love about this small pond, because it's really only like 11 by 11 feet, is the depth of it. It goes straight down four feet and I'm going to show you that in just a second. So my last favorite part of the pond is definitely the skimmer box area. We didn't know exactly how we were going to hide the pond. We just didn't know and I really really wanted to use a skimmer box but I didn't want it to be an eyesore to the pond. I really wanted to hide it and I think we did an awesome job. So the use of these big giant boulders and then creating this kind of narrow channel where the water can kind of sneak in between these big boulders, hides the skimmer box, plus really helps with the filtration and the skimming action. And then the way we hit it was just a combination of driftwood and a simple little spider plant here. So you can see the skimmer box down in there. I can still get into this just by moving a couple of these little pieces. It makes it pretty effortless for me to get down in here, pull the basket out, close the door, do whatever I gotta do. I told you I'd show you it was four feet deep, right, right up to my ribs. I would love to have this at my house. I love the depth of it. There's this great rock to just kind of sit on right over in here. I mean, is this not the best aquascape hot tub ever? Cold, cold tub, warm tub, whatever you want to call it. Hey guys, tell me what your favorite part is. Hopefully you love the new addition to the Aqua Gardens as much as we do. If you want to see more projects like this, don't forget this September 14th and 15th, our customers are opening up their backyard for our final pond tour of the year. It's gonna be awesome. My house is on it, plus 15 other ponds. Don't miss it. Put your calendar, fly out, drive out. Make sure you make that a priority for you and we'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Bye.